Hello friends, I'm Kerry Wood, pastor of the Goldston Methodist Church in Goldston, North Carolina, but I'm here this morning to give you a word from Hawaii, Mele Kalikimaka, which is Merry Christmas in the Hawaiian language. Now, why would I be wearing this shirt on New Year's Day of 2024? Well, it's because we are still in the season of Christmas. And so, Mele Kalikamaka, we are still wishing each other Merry Christmas. December the 25th started the Christmas season. It wasn't the end. And so we're looking in the scriptures at the stories still of Christmas this first week in January. And there's no better, more classic example of scriptures about Christmas, the birth of Jesus, than Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. Hear now these words. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Verse 7, there was no guest room available for them. This sentence contains one of the most commonly misunderstood things about Jesus' birth that we in the English-speaking world have been living with for over 400 years. And that is the mistranslation that took place when the authorized English Bible otherwise known as the King James Version, because it was authorized by King James of England in 1611. In that version of the scriptures, it said there was no room in the inn, I-N-N, as in the hotel, the tavern with guest rooms. And for 400 plus years, we in the English speaking world have been confused by this idea that Jesus was born in a cave, in a stable, because there was no room in the inn. The innkeeper said, I'm sorry, no vacancy, but I'll give you the dregs. And that is, I can put you up with all the other animals from all the other guests. I'll put you in the stable. That's not what the context was. When Joseph and Mary arrived in Bethlehem, yes, she was pregnant, but she wasn't popping. She wasn't about to give birth on the time of their arrival. No, Luke tells us that while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. We don't know how long they were there, but when the time came for the baby to be born, they moved out of the family guest room where all the other extended family was living, and they went to the stable, which was actually below the house, because that was the most conducive for birthing babies. And there was no crib for his bed because they didn't use cribs back then. And so the manger became the best place to lay this baby because that was where the clean straw, the clean bedding would be. So what do we make of this misconception? Number one, Jesus had hospitality from the very beginning, although it was a very poor environment for the king to be born into. But even more, Jesus was in the middle of everything in that house. That was the hub of activity for the family. And Jesus is born in the midst. Well, you may think that your life is too busy for Jesus. 
but he should be at the very center of your home, at the center of your life. So as you start 2024, let Jesus be right there in the middle of it all. Let the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords have the humble place of your heart. And I'll see you tomorrow for our next daily devotion. Thank you.